So, um, we're going to be continuing on this series that I've just started, I guess, as things that I just generally do not like in wrestling. Um, so, like the last video that we did on uh, grapevines, um, generally not the most effective thing that I think that there is in the world of wrestling. And now we're moving on to uh, Nelsons. And uh, the Nelsons, you know, they are something that are hit and miss as far as their legality in competitive wrestling or grappling. Um, and so, you know, a half Nelson generally is going to be um, universally okay in all forms of wrestling. But then to when we get into that full Nelson, which is going to be the main topic of today's video, um, it's, it's hit or miss in certain competitions. It'll be allowed and sometimes it won't. And part of the reasons for that, and when we look at uh, different moves and why they may or may not be legal in competition, it's usually going to be uh, looking at you know the types of injuries that are associated with a particular move and um, you know how effective it is for the objective of whatever your uh, competition is going for, right? So if we're looking at a pinning comp competition, you know, a half Nelson might be good for control and transitioning, but not so great for the full Nelson when it comes to actually pinning somebody. Um, looking at uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or things like that, submission wrestling, you know, we're not going to be seeing, uh, not everybody's going to submit to a Nelson, and it can be considered more of like a time waste, but if somebody was to really, really try to get a submission out of somebody, you know, it's going to happen one of two ways. So when you do a full Nelson, you know, whether you just have your hands on top of each other, or if you lace them in the back of the head, um, you know, there's two ways that you can possibly get a submission out of that. One is that we are hyperextending the arms back, or we are leveraging into the neck which is going to cause you to go into this hyper uh, flex position and puts a lot of pressure here if you were successful in completing that submission which you know oftentimes in competition you might actually see a successful completion of an arm bar or a knee bar or something like that and that can be devastating as it is but when we're talking about the neck if this were to be a successful you know pressing into the neck you know, what we're looking for at is nerve impingement. If you're lucky, you can see uh, neck strains, herniated discs, or, uh, you know, damage to the spinal column that could lead to paralysis or death. And so it's, you know, if things went all the way to the red zone, we're looking at some pretty bad consequences when it comes to the full Nelson. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm not a particularly fond of getting caught into a full Nelson, especially if somebody's really, really committing to it, it's because if they are particularly strong in that position, there is some pretty serious damage that can come with it. Now, uh, the full Nelson, how we're going to defend that is going to be different depending on whether or not we are standing or if we're on the ground. Um, you know, if somebody is like a little guy and they climbed up on my hips and they got me in the full Nelson, okay, great. Maybe we that's going to be a video for another day. But generally speaking, you know, the people that are going to be using that are going to be guys at your size or larger uh, and trying to get you into that position. You're not, probably not going to have much in the way of much smaller guys trying to do that from uh, at least the standing position. And uh, one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to start this on uh, from the standing position is it kind of feeds into just general principles that we see from standing when we're wrestling. So if somebody is able to get your, to your back, you've already fucked up, whatever, they've gotten to your back, and they've decided for whatever reason that they're going to go for this thing that you may not tap to when they can just choke you out. But uh, let's go ahead and go, just you know pretend like choking them, somebody out is not on the table right now, and they're going for this full Nelson. Well, when somebody's standing behind you, um, what I really need to do is I, the way that you generally are going to get out of a full Nelson, right, is that... If you're strong enough, you might and bring your arms down, and you can actually break that full Nelson apart. Um, and generally speaking, that's a good strategy. But when you do that, you're kind of getting taller than that person. And again, this is one of the reasons why short people probably aren't going to go for the full, full Nelson. Is that you know I'm getting taller, and then if I was on the ground, I'd be trying to move my shoulders above my opponent's shoulders and flatten them out on the ground so that he can't get into that full Nelson position. And usually, I'll be able to escape the back. Out by doing that. Um, the other way I can go with it is 
down with my body. So I'd be going from here, you know, I'm stuck in this full Nelson position, and I'd be dropping down. And in order for this to be an effective way to, to escape, I really need to be looking at trying to get my opponent to dig in. Right? So if I'm just standing here, we're very casual, and I just start lowering myself to the ground, my opponent's going to follow me in there to go to the back mount. Maybe from there I'm going to get into a body scissor. I might end up in a body triangle. Uh, they might transition to a choke. I'm just getting into a much worse position by slowly, slowly lowering myself down. What I would want to be doing is I would want to be dropping my body down and in a way that allows me to get out of that. Right? So. If I'm out here, what I generally probably would be doing with my arms is I would actually still be trying to engage with this, right? Because I actually want to create some space so that when I do get ready for my drop, I can go here. Now I want to keep make a pretty good point here is that when I get my arms up here into this like diving position, if I start to straighten my arms out and get here, they can get kind of caught in kind of a faux arm bar. So I would actually kind of want to be crossing them and keeping them a little bit bent as I drop down, but I'm still getting them very, very narrow here. So I'm going from a wide position as wide as I can muscle myself into, so fighting that Nelson, and then I'm getting into this position. That's only half of it, right? So the other half is what's going on in the rest of my body. So what I want to be doing is I want to actually not be standing still. I want to be moving around so that I can feel when my opponent is actually going to resist me moving around. Now it's not as much if I'm starting to move forward, you know, they're not, they're actually being primed to follow me down if there, there's that forward momentum. But if I'm trying to move back, like I'm forcing them back, I maybe I'm arching my back, they may in instinctively push back into me. When they push back into me, they're engaging their quads, they're kind of setting themselves up to stay tall, right? And then they're going to drop down, right? So this is the same thing with, uh, you know, if we're standing face to face, we're trying to get our grips, and I'm trying to find out if I can go for a low single or something like that, you know, I need to get my opponent to commit towards staying tall. So maybe sometimes I might like start to snap their head down like I'm trying to get on my chest onto the back of their shoulder blades so I can take top four quarter or something like that. Um, and in doing that, the way that my opponent might respond to that is to build their posture back up. When they build their posture back up, they are committing to that upward motion. So if I were to jump down and get that low single, they're not gonna sprawl on my head because they're already moving in this upward direction. Does that make sense? So the same thing is gonna be happening here. So if I am in this full Nelson position, I might be fighting this and I might be driving them back until I feel some resistance and then that's my cue to drop down, sit on my butt as quickly as I can, and get into this kind of bent armed diver, diver's position so that I can slip out of that full Nelson and drop straight down. Um, once I get down onto my butt or whatever, the, you know, maybe I'll start setting up an X guard, maybe I'll spin on my butt so that I'm playing an open guard or something like that. But the key point is here is that I need to encourage them by pushing and driving back into them to get them to dig in so that they're not going to follow me on the way down. So now we're going to work with the assumption that that didn't work or maybe somebody set up the full Nelson from this ground position. And once we get down into this ground position, I'm making sure this chair isn't shedding on me. Um, so when they when we get there, if they're holding onto their back here, oftentimes, you know, if somebody is not establishing a good back mount, let's say that their legs are just off to the side here. Um, you know, the ways that I might defend this is I might start to, again, move my hips away from their hips and move outward, or I might start to hop my hip over a leg and start to uh, turn into them so I can get one of the arms out. Um, so most of the ways that people are going to stop you from doing this is that they're going to put their feet on the inside of your gate. So if I was stuck in the Nelson, the person was behind me, their legs are coming over my hips and their heels are coming into the inside of my thighs, that's gonna stop me from being able to come up and down. And it's gonna be the same whether they're sitting upright or if you know you're starting to recline back a little bit. Um, so if I can, even with that full Nelson, if I'm stuck in this position, instead of trying to drop down this way, which might actually become a little bit more difficult, um, I am going to have to kill this spider because I do not like spiders. Anyways, um, 
So, um, instead of dropping downward towards the hips, right, what I will usually try to do when somebody's got me in a full Nelson, especially if they don't have that good hip control, if I can get their legs off of my hips, like out, out of my crotch area, then what I will do is I'll start to actually walk myself back and try to go over their shoulder to one side as I'm trying to pressure down. And that's usually what's gonna get me out of that full Nelson. But, you know, once you're kind of, they've got this back mount position, you've got a lot to kind of worry about here. Not just for, you know, the full Nelson, they can easily transition that into a rear naked choke or something along those lines. Um, but also, you know, especially when we're talking about this submission wrestling that involves, you know, amateurs, not necessarily Brazilian Jiu Jitsu type things, um, what a lot of people are going to do is they're going to try to scissor you from here. And so if, you know, they are in this position and they're crossing their ankles here to start to set up a scissor, and a lot of times when I see this in like uh, BG East or porn videos or something like that, that's where the legs go. They'll go here and they'll extend down towards your knees. The thing about that is, is that if I'm the one that that's happening to, I can just take this foot I'm doing this foot because it's my good side. I'm going to step over the legs that are now straightening out in front of me so that um, my uh, calf is going right across here. So I get here, I try and go behind, and then I project my hips forward. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna fold this top foot over the ankle of the bottom one, and it will break this foot. So you can actually defend the body scissors. You're not necessarily by escaping it, but by submitting the person that's trying to apply it to you. And, you know, that's kind of an amateur mistake for multiple reasons. One is that when you're projecting your legs downward in a body scissor, um, you're gonna be running over the hips. So you're hitting here in this non-compressible area, and you're probably not gonna get a submission out of that person anyways. So if I have that back mount position, what I wanna be doing is I'd actually try to kick my legs straight up or as high as, as I can, so I'll bring my knees closer to my chest and up. Now, the person who's in that full Nelson body scissor combo can't bring their leg up that high to get up to get that submission. Another way that you can do it, uh, and this is you know perfectly valid, you know, if instead of staying square on that uh, full Nelson, is you just come off to the side a little bit and then scissor off to the side a little bit, and then you don't have that ankle lock that you have to worry about. But it does make escaping the Nelson a little bit easier. The other thing that you can do is the body triangle, right? So if you, you're putting on a full balancing from the back, uh, instead of going for the uh, straight body scissor, we can bring a leg across, so it's going across the belly, put it behind the knee. This is one of the areas where I um, see people mis making a mistake the most. Um, and one of the, the mistakes here is that when they when people put do a body triangle, oftentimes they'll put their ankle way too low here. I want to make sure that my ankle goes all the way into the popliteal zone, right? This bend of the knee right here. And the other thing, Echo, shut up. Um, the next thing is that when I come over, I'm going to create this external rotation. I'm going to point my knee out as I lock up here. I want to get above my ankle and then I internally rotate in. You see that that closes off the space. If I were just to come straight over the top here and then come over here, I might not get as far in, I might not get it as tight and as good of grip. I am also not limp with this foot, right? I'm keeping my boot on. I'm trying to keep it as flexed as possible so that my leg doesn't slide down because of the pressure of the pe person here in my groin. So, once I, I'm in, if I get that internal rotation, you see that shrinks up that space, and now I can actually start to scissor and cause quite a bit of discomfort there with that body triangle, as well as with the full Nelson. And the odds of escaping in that scenario are significantly lower. I'm not saying that you can't escape. There are uh, definitely ways of escaping a body triangle uh, situation. It's really hard to do when you're in the full Nelson on top of that. So, you know, it's not that I think that the full Nelson is necessarily the worst submission that's ever been done on the face of the planet. It's by far from that. I don't think it's the most practical. I don't think you're going to get a tap out of it with most people. But um, that being said, it can be used for control. It can be used for discovery. And you can now com uh, combine it with other submissions that you're more likely to get the tap from. So that's kind of my deep dive into uh, the full Nelson. Let me know if there's other techniques that you guys want me to cover. And 
Play safe. See you guys later.